three, two, one, and we roll. What up, everyone? And today I'm gonna walk you through how to get quick start at the principal app. If you've seen my video where principal and Envision Studio got compared and I tried to kind of break it down on how to get started with one NV ever, what are advantages about it, you probably kind of bought into the idea that it might be a superior tool for motion graphics, bringing UIs to life, you know, getting stakeholder input, just making kind of like a visual porn from your UIs. I think it's really, really powerful tool. So today I wanted to talk to you about that and perhaps just dive in into key functionality which you can just learn in like 5-10 minutes and that's all it takes. I mean, principle is so simple, it's kind of like learning a Zeppelin uh, using Sketch, let's say. So as long as you design some pretty UI in Sketch, uh, port it to principle, you can animate within minutes. It's easy as just clicking a couple of buttons and you're done and it automatically animates it. So it's pretty damn good. All right, so apologies, it might sound like um, I don't know, uh, I'm using like some shitty microphone, which I am because my webcam is, you know, shitty microphone dependent and I can't really use my studio one I usually use because otherwise it crashes the video. So bear with me, I'm gonna try to walk you through and not to sound too annoying. So just to show you exactly what we're gonna build today, we're gonna build animation something like this. As you can see, we're gonna click on a button, button is gonna expand, we're gonna have a back animation as well. And uh, it's like a simple two-state type of animation, which is still neat because you have different items transforming, different items animating in or out. And it, otherwise, I think it's pretty good. So, you know, it's, it's quite impactful and it's easy to then communicate to developers and say what you wanna do. But to make it even more fun, because I'm gonna try to explain how to do this and perhaps you're gonna learn that way on your end is we're gonna just set a timer for five minutes and I'm gonna try to give you as much knowledge and information as possible in five minutes and I'm not a fast talker but I think because of a time limit it's just gonna you know gonna go right out out of the bat so I'm gonna set to Alexa Alexa set timer for five minutes five minutes Starting now. Boom, and we go. To get started with principle, you're gonna have to create some sort of two different states, let's say in Sketch. Uh, I have two different artboards. One artboard is called A, as you can see on your screen, and another artboard is called B. So I'm gonna try to animate from one item to the other. You might ask like, so how is it gonna animate? We're gonna have to do any complex linking or not? And, and the short answer is not. So let me just show it how it works. So I'll, I'm just gonna select both artboards. And then you simply would just go to principle and click on an import icon. And as you can see, it automatically uh, detected that I selected it in Sketch app at 2x. And I wanna import only selected artboards. And let's do that. So boom, it imported and automatically I can see a preview on the right hand side. And as you can see, if let's say I do something like this button, I'm gonna assign an action with a bolt on tap, do this, as you can see it's assigned, then something is gonna happen. So let's see what happens now in the preview. Boom. Did you notice that it already animated? How is that possible? So let's say what if I do if I tap on arrow and let's say the gesture is gonna be just simple tap by default if you drag it it added that as you can see arrow points it on the top but it goes back let's see what happens then boom did you notice that it automatically animates the stuff so the text goes up the map fades in fades out the button collapses or or expands how is that possible? Well, and the answer is pretty damn simple. So principle, all it does, it detects two different states with some caveat to it. And just to show you an example, what I mean is every single layer here, for example, this almost here text is called almost. In the next state, there's another layer called almost as well, but just with a different text and different position. So principle being so smart, it just automatically picks it up and it animates. So let's preview that. You see almost there is here. 
and when it goes to the next state, it animates in different text, but it also animates different position and size. How cool is that? And now it, it's exactly the same with other things. So for example, maybe you noticed if I go back, that the map is not existing, but when it reappears, how is that happening? So I have the map, this one, which is world map. It's, it already exists in a preview state as a world map. But the only difference is that it's hidden. So here you see opacity is selected to zero. If I would say opacity 20, the map would be present. And if I would put it somewhere down below, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. It just adds some noise. But now if I would animate it, you see the map fades in a little bit more and is pushed up. So that's, that's all it is, really guys. Uh, that's, that's how awesome principle is. You just have two different states you could have even more states. So let's say, for example, maybe I'm gonna create a third one. Uh, just duplicate our board. Let's see what we can do. I might delete that. And let's say if you click on this icon, I'm gonna tap it to this. And then here, let's do some changes for the sake of it. So maybe, let's say the button disappears to opacity zero. We can push all this information down below like this increase the size of let's say illustration is hidden of a background like this so it's all pushed up and let's say the more world map could go down as well for the sake of it and maybe this is this means that the user would just zoom in into a world map for whatever reason so as you can see we can start in previewing so principle is neat like that because it detects what state you're on if you're on this state it previews that state and then you can actually interact from there so you see i i made this icon icon basket on tap as a primary call to action here and if i tap on it boom it just goes to the next state and animates everything else automatically and if I would just say, if you go, I go back, back, it goes to back to a pre state and to a first state. So then you can create a sort of cohesive prototype, some sort of animations, things of that nature. You can also capture it. So let's say principal has this built-in capture tool, and now it's gonna start recording, which is neat. And how most designers actually produce their, you know, all those UI animations and visual porn is that they just record it and when they export it, let's say, to some other type of deals. Demo one, boom, I exported my first prototype. And it was done just within, I think I still have a couple of minutes, but it's super duper fast. Some of you might think if you're a bit more advanced, can you edit the animations, let's say. I mean, it's all good that it just does it for you. Yes, you can. So for example, in this tab, as you can see, if I click on the arrow up above, of that animation on tab, it opens the timeline. And in the timelines here, you can actually select how snappy, how fast, when it has to kick in. Maybe you want to add a delay. For example, let's add a delay to a button. So all these parameters, which are automatically created for you, dependent on your changes. And let's preview that. Let's see how it, how it works on that little screen. Boom, you see it took around a bit more than half a second for it to kick in but then we can also do something like the width could be longer you see there is a delay there is some smoothness to that or we can even change to springiness for whatever reason maybe that's your thing you know all those options here are possible so then you can go nitpick and and create your custom animations which you want to present and I think this, this tool is pretty damn neat because it allows you to do all those things and, um, and impress, let's say, peer designers, your stakeholders, clients. You can just show it to developers and they're gonna know exactly what animations to do. You know, once you master that, because I mean, this, this is just a few minutes for you to get started. It's so easy, so simple. Then you can start working with drivers, let's say. And drivers are just slightly uh, a bit more complex scenarios where you can you can for example create a slide in slides out some gestures scroll effects drag and drop effects you know something you want to limit within frames or within dimensions you can do with drivers and i'm not gonna go right into that because i think it's gonna take another 15 minutes but if you like me to cover that please leave a comment below. I'm going to try to get back to that and, you know, uncover it for you. Then you can have also animation paints, which is again, that, that 
timeline down below if you select one of animations and you can do whatever you want and of course Alexa stop boom so I guess our time just passed uh, it was super duper quick do you feel like you learned something from this really quick walkthrough which is just five minutes long if so give a like subscribe share to your friends you know do all that jazz um, I'm really interested to see and kind of to morph my channel in one way or the other so if you have any preferences or interest areas leave a comment below thanks a lot for watching this and I hope it was helpful